Hello and welcome to the Aid Station. I'm Chris Robb and it's my great pleasure today to be traveling to Boston to meet with uh, Mary Wittenberg, the president of EF Education First Pro Cycling. Hi Mary, great to see you again. It's been many years. Oh Chris, it's so good to see you and I love what you're doing, bringing all these voices from around the world of mass participation together, so thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, it's been fun. It's been absolutely wonderful. And I guess, you know, you've got an incredible story in our industry and no one can tell it better than you. So I'd love you to start by just telling us a couple of minutes of the Mary Wittenberg story, please. Well, that's so nice of you. I grew up a cheerleader and I think that's actually my inner self is I love to help people unlock their potential. And I've been extraordinarily lucky, lucky to do that through sport these last 20 years. I did I began my career 10 years as a corporate lawyer in a big law firm. I believed it was important to have the solid foundation that one would help me pay off all my school loans, but two, give me a good experience in business and in law. And I meant to stay for three years and I stayed for 10, but that was a great foundation to what's now been living my life dream year after year after year, working through these extraordinary organizations, starting with New York Roadrunners and the New York City Marathon, starting Virgin Sport with Richard Branson and a handful of amazing, dynamic young executives who are passionate about cycling and running and all kinds of fitness. And now I get to be president of this professional cycling team representing this company that's all about education and travel. So it's, I've been very lucky and most lucky because I just love what I do and the people I work with. So we're so lucky in our industry, aren't we? And we were talking before, before we started recording is, you know, cycling and running, two of my big passions and, and the cycling industry is just incredible as well. And, and we were talking as well about, and, and I hadn't realized, to be honest, that you now live in Boston. And I'm interested to hear what, what's life like for you in, in, in the current COVID-19 situation in Boston? Well, I'm making the best of it. What's great for all of us who travel a lot, it's so nice to be home with my family, my husband, and then I, we have a 19 year old who's not as happy to be home at the end of his college, <laughs> first year of college, but he's doing well. And then we have a junior in high school. And I think that's the group. It's, it's interesting, you know, they're in the middle of so much schoolwork and SAT and getting ready for college. And I think it's kind of nice to have for them a little less pressure on uh, ticking off all the boxes of all the things you have to do as a junior in high school. So we're just enjoying our time here and the work parts have been full of challenge, but the home part's been really nice. Fantastic. And you're able to get out and about. You're able to do some, uh, some, some running and exercise and, and so on. How, how's the lockdown rules, I guess? I feel so fortunate because so much of our team is in Europe. And so we had to watch our staff and our cyclists not able to go out the door in Spain and eventually in Italy. And that's been really hard. We've been very fortunate. So I've been doing a five mile run every morning, pretty much throughout. And then a little bit longer on the weekend, done two halves, inspired to do the Brooklyn half virtual and the Hackney half. So that's gotten me going a little bit longer on the weekend. But we've been we've been in a fair amount during the day. And now I was actually realizing something I've learned about myself is I know I'm made to move. Mm -hmm. But once I get working, I can sit and work for hours and hours and hours and hours. And I woke up last week saying, okay, I have got to be moving more than just in the morning. So uh, I'm thrilled I got my beautiful new Cannondale bike and now I'm getting out a little bit in the afternoon too. It's, it's so important because we're not even moving around the office or commuting to and from. So I've been getting out enough, but I actually am excited to get out even more. Wonderful. Yeah, so, so, so great to get out on the bike, isn't it? I, I, I love that, that freedom of, uh, and the distances that you can cover as well. That's great to hear. And, and I guess, you know, challenges, there must be plenty of them. You, you mentioned the team in, in Spain and Italy and other parts of the world, many of them locked up. I think I shared with you, I was just talking to Shane Bannon the other day and, uh, you know, he, he was telling me that he's the, the GM of the Mitchelton Scott team, for those yeah. that don't know. And you know, he, he was telling me that he hadn't, for, for nine weeks, he hadn't had any human contact apart from people in the supermarket. And, you know, the, the challenges that that, that brought on for people, which, which, you know, there's probably many people like that all over the world that, you know, we're lucky to have families you were talking about. But, you know, your riders, um, you know, some of the challenges you're going through in terms of communicating with them, change management within the business. What would you say would be, you know, one of the most challenging decisions that you've had to make recently? Uh, I think Leader. there's been 
two, two buckets of hard decisions. First, it's this beautiful sport of professional cycling and our whole reason for being is inspiring other people to ride, right? So the early hard decisions were when this was just starting, we're a sport where you've got the UCI, the governing body, you've got the events running the events, and you've got the teams. And actually in the early days, it was evident to us that as a team, we had to be thinking independently, do we think we should be racing? So we went ahead with the early races in Italy in March and made a determination that we didn't think it was going to be smart to be riding when the uh, pandemic was just getting to Italy and just beginning to truly challenge the systems in Italy. So there we had to be out early and, and go to the organizers and go to UCI and say, we really would like to skip these events. We don't think it's the time to be racing and we hope we can be, um, you know, we hope you can exempt us from, from doing this. And that was hard. Mickleton was another team. I think Mickleton was another team who did that early. So that was the early part in racing and now that's coming back again, right? Now, while the race organizers and the UCI look at what's gonna be right for race in the fall, we also have to look and work very hard on our protocols and what are we gonna expect? When do we think it's right to go back? And, and hopefully it all comes together that we agree as a united group, but we have to look out for the safety of our, our riders and our staff first and foremost and care about the fans. So. That's been a hard part. And then the second part is it's been a, a challenging time in terms of we are EF who owns us. EF Education First is an extraordinary company that opens the world to education and gets all these people traveling um, to learn English around the world. The, the business was hard hit early, right? And now it's starting to come back, but we had to make some immediate changes and have been through, many people have been through with staff reductions our riders have been extraordinary and they they had took voluntary reductions and it's that part's really hard because these are people we you know adore and feel so strongly about and are want the best for and it's it's been amazing and that people have really been in it together but it's not the year anyone expected yeah and look that was you know another one of the things we were talking about this amazing team ethos in cycling and how how they sacrifice for each other on the road. And, and I'm guessing that in some ways quite well equipped to say, you know, as a team, we're in this together, Challenge when, when you would have had those conversations, they can't have been easy conversations to go, go forward with. But my gut is that you probably would have got that response from the team saying, we're in this together, we understand. It's incredible. And you cannot believe, I mean, you can believe, but the leadership that you see, and especially, when you think about something like reductions, they they impact different levels, but it's it's extraordinary to often see people who might uh, in some ways be most affected are the ones who step up. The leaders just like Arrigo Berto ran from Colombia. They just they lead in these times and and you know you can also count on someone like Rigo to also be putting out the dance videos in in Instagram of like this feel, you know, leading the way and showing like we carry on and, and let's keep going. So they've been amazing through that. But I think in addition, what I want to highlight is our whole sports change. So suddenly they were all racing indoors and we're lucky to have Zwift and the other platforms that have virtual racing and to watch our riders immediately raise their hands. We'll do more. We'll race in indoors. We'll do more so social, social media, Instagram, and other takeovers. We'll help give tips to riders of all sorts. And it's been extraordinary. In some ways, I think they've probably worked harder than ever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And how, I mean, they're working hard indoors. When, when this transition now comes to being racing on the roads, and you're seeing now things starting to happen with, you know, Bundesliga playing at the weekend and the Premier League looking to come back and rugby in New Zealand. But they must, do, you, do you have to manage this transition period where that, that indoor fitness, how does that translate into on, on the road fitness for races? Yeah, well, everyone's ready to get outdoors. That's for sure. So one, I do think the indoor, I'm not the expert, but the indoor racing, it's, it's, it's so absolute. I think for the period of time they're doing it, some of these races, one of my favorite moments was Jimmy Whalen, one of our young Aussies who has a running background. He went out at 100 miles per hour at one point to break open a pack on this indoor bike, which you're not, you know, it's 
only you're not really going to go 100 miles per hour on your bike outdoors. So the cardio, I think, is there um, to a degree, but just like we've about being out for so long and there's no replacing that. So they're really dying to get outside. What's interesting now as a business matter is so we've all discovered the positives of indoor cycling. Did a really cool fundraiser with Zwift Tour for All that was on Eurosport. Yes. Europe, and that was great. But now it's this question of, okay, if we still can't be at events and the participants can't be at mass participation events, but we're dying to be outside, what's the balance? And here's where Strava comes in, right? So is this the pivot moment where we're doing do-it-yourself, you know, inspiring do-it-yourself um, rides around the world because we can use Strava and not just be indoors? So this is the transition. We're being asked to do a lot more indoor still, and we're, we're, we're saying we'd like the guys to be able to be outside because that's where they want to be, and maybe Strava is the new answer for virtual riding for a while. Yeah, and look, and it was one of the things that we spoke about. One of the webinars I ran was on virtual racing and, and, and the, the opportunity that virtual racing presents for those that embrace it to create this engagement. In many instances, we've seen it as kind of replacing races, but in, 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 in other people that are doing it really well, it's this opportunity to build. And I, and I think it'll become part of, part of the new normal for those that do it well is this mix of virtual building up to a, a real event. And, and the comment was made was that, you know, cycling has the best opportunity with the platforms that we have available to replicate better than running the reality of, of, of it. Exactly. And we'll hope to marry. So we were all about this alt program too, where we race not only the world tour, but we race other races where regular people ride like Dirty Kanza and yeah. Leadville and others. And so what we'll hope to do with Rafa, our, our, our content partner, is tell stories like some of our guys, let's see what happens this fall, what's able to happen. But a lot with Morton and Alex Howes, we might, they, they want to do all these, you know, ride from Canada to Mexico, ride these unique trails in Utah. But if we can, show what they're doing and get other people to show what they're doing and, and wherever you, where everybody is, it could be really interesting and create a community that hopefully can last even when the events all come back. Yeah, wonderful. You spoke about leadership, Rigoberto Iran, and, and, and you've seen lots of leadership. What, where, from, from your perspective, where do you take your leadership leads from and what are some of the, the key leadership decisions you've had to make during this, Mary? Oh, that's such a good question. I'm inspired by so many different people. I'm you know, it's interesting. I'm probably always most inspired by the team around me and this commitment to deliver to them. So we are like now those of us are that are here are like on a mission to get this team to the other side and thriving and back to better than ever. And so, so much of my inspiration comes from the people I'm responsible for and the people I work with that, you know, we're in this together and how do we get forward? So the biggest decisions now have really we're down to when is the right time to be back and how is the right time to be back and how are we going to do it safely and how do we help you know right now one of the beautiful things is so many people are on bikes i don't know if you're seeing that yes yeah so the first is yeah. when and how do we get back in a safe manner but then it's how do we keep that going because this is a real opportunity to keep people on, on their bikes and i love it's like we see these families of ducklings it's the mom and the dad and these kids are on the bikes in between them and there's something that might be quite positive that comes out of that. Yeah, no, look, no, no doubt. And that's, that's what I believe. And, and, and running as well. So many ta people yeah, taking definitely. up running, it's this boom all over again. And then just to finish on a, a, on an inspiring note, and you've shared lots of inspiring things already, but you know, you, you've, you've seen so many inspirational things in your career, New York marathon records being broken, obviously the, you know, the inspiration of disabled athletes and, and so much more. What is there one little story that you could leave with the viewers that that's something that really inspires you, whether it's out of COVID-19 or just a, an, a really inspiring moment you've experienced, please? We're lucky to be you know, surrounded by inspiration all the time. I'm going to highlight to one, Mike Woods. So one of our riders broke his femur in the last race of the year, Perry Nice in, in March, the last race at the beginning of the year. <laughs> we'll see. And he's been getting on his Swift bike, uh, getting on his bike and Swift doing recovery rides with regular people because he's got a he had a broken femur, right? And he could even he couldn't walk, but he was getting on the bike to, to do these recovery rides, and that was extraordinary to watch. But I'll tell you what I've been most inspired about in this time during this time. There's been so many things, but in the U.S., I don't know if you followed along, but we had this really tragic case of 
a young black man, 25 years yeah. old, Ahmad Aubrey, being killed in February while on a jog and no arrest had been made in, until just a couple of weeks ago. And one of the inspiring things that come out of, come about, comes about during this time is the running community here in the U.S. is united first in sort of this horror of how do we not know and how, how has nothing happened in this case, uh, but then it brought all these people together to run for Maud and do this 2.23 challenge on his birthday in May. And I'm really hoping what came out of that was a, 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 an honest discussion about how do we talk about race, most importantly, how do we, of all colors, um, stand up and be ally, allies to help ensure that racism isn't part of our society, let alone part of our sports? And so that is something that I hope uh, we had a moment during this time, unrelated to this time in some ways, that I hope carries forward to something more significant in the future. That's a, that's a wonderful point to end on. Thank you. And I think you know, so much good is going to come out of that. And that's another particularly good one, as you say, not necessarily directly linked, but uh, it's amazing what we as humanity can do under adversity if we choose to, isn't it? Let's hope we keep it going. Thank you, Mary. Wonderful to see you again. Thanks so much for making time. All the best. Uh, looking forward to seeing the team back on the bike soon. All right. Keep it going, Chris. Thank you.